Robert Earl, 33 Dreams of Indy. And right now, I actually should change the name to 333,000 Dreams of Indy because those are the people that are dreaming that there will be a Indy 500 this year at the regularly scheduled time. Day four without racing, and it was uh, quite a disappointment for the drivers, for the teams, and the fans here at the uh, St. Pete Grand Prix. And uh, also a bit of an interesting decision by the St. Pete Grand Prix to stick by uh, what is printed on the ticket of no refunds and uh, not at least offer some sort of uh, cashback compensation, uh, even a percentage of it. Uh, the decision that uh, they've made, a tough decision, is uh, to apply the uh, credit towards next year's ticket uh, or to a future event um, that is managed by the same promotion company. So that would be at Mid-Ohio, uh, Portland, or Toronto that you would get a 110% credit on your ticket here in St. Pete for that. Now... I started this show in order to uh, bring stories and to tell the stories of the young up-and-coming drivers that one day hope to be racing in the Indy 500, uh, but as a secondary without having you as the fans, um, then we uh, don't have a show. And so I'd love to get your opinion. Uh, I formed a Facebook group, uh, 33 Dreams of Indy group. I uh, would love for your feedback either there or in the comments of this video. What do you think of the um, lack of refund policy with the uh, St. Pete uh, Grand Prix? Uh, also, as we look at it, uh, another track that's affected by the uh, closure, uh, the follow-on event would be at uh, Barber uh, Motorsports Park in uh, Birmingham. Uh, they have indicated that they will allow for there to be refunds. Uh, so that uh, brings into question the rescheduling uh, of that race, whether it's uh, postponed or fully canceled. And of course, the fluid situation will go day by day. Um, sad to hear that the Austin uh, track uh, was flat out closing, um, that they were not going to be keeping uh, employees on hand. Uh, understand that they're not able to uh, put on races or or concerts or events and so they would not be able to cover them um, they don't uh, quite have the economic base it seems like of the uh, NBA or NHL arenas uh, where a number but not all not all teams have stepped up to uh, take care of their uh, folks that are there in the arena or the track in order to uh, uh, put on that uh, fan experience. Uh, so um, a website that I uh, am a fan of, Russian Machine Never Breaks, uh, they gave a team-by-team -team listing in the NHL as to those teams that have reached out and actually covered their employees in the arena and those teams that haven't. Um, and it appears that Austin, as far as a racetrack is concerned, would fall into the category of not covering their individuals. So again, I would love to hear your um, impressions on that. What are your thoughts? Um, 33 Dreams of Indy group on Facebook uh, or your comments down below here. Uh, also at 33 Dreams of Indy on Twitter, uh, Instagram, any of the uh, major social media uh, platforms that you'd be able to uh, uh, follow along and uh, also share your, your comments, etc. Indianapolis put out a statement, and it was interesting that the statement came just hours before the CDC recommendations that went from 50 individuals gathering one place down to 10. Uh, I guess uh, my local Clearwater Beach hasn't gotten that uh, announcement yet because uh, the photos yesterday, the beach was uh, wide open and full of spring breakers, but that's a whole other story uh, that we could talk about. Uh, but the Indianapolis Motor Speedway uh, looking and planning as if the race will still continue. Um, that eight-week period would uh, fall between the Grand Prix and the Indy 500 race itself. 
So what are your thoughts? Uh, do you think that we're going to see an Indy 500 this year at its regularly scheduled uh, weekend? Uh, are we going to be looking at something like the Kentucky Derby that uh, put the race back to September? Uh, are we all going to be visiting uh, with a little bit extra close um, in October or November um, into the Indianapolis area and watching the Indy 500 so that the race can go on and the show can go on? Um, everything, every indication is, is that the, the team there at Indianapolis is doing everything possible to be ready for the race to take place at the regularly scheduled time. Um, but is that being a little bit optimistic? Would love to think of uh, your thoughts. Um, also, uh, not Indy related, but uh, with NASCAR, uh, NASCAR has uh, made the decision. Um, they put a little bit of a, a, a firm date. Uh, that seems very optimistic as well as to the May uh, time frame that they'll uh, gather back together in Martinsville. Um, but instead of uh, thinking about uh, the Richmond race being in flux uh, that was scheduled to uh, happen in April, uh, they made a postponement of all events that have occurred through the end of April and are shooting for May to come back. Uh, obviously, that could change at any moment, and uh, we're going to be able to give updates on this. So um, with the fans as well, uh, this being a, um, I want it to be much more interactive. Uh, we'll be doing some uh, Facebook or um, YouTube lives, um, but I want to find out what you're thinking, what you'd like to see. Uh, I've got a number of interviews with uh, young up-and-coming drivers. Completed one this morning uh, that will be coming out in the next week or two. Uh, but I would like to hear of uh, what you would like to see, what you'd like to hear about, what we'd like to talk about as we get through this period of time. Um, with a lack of real racing or shall I say racing that occurs on the track where you can actually um, smell the burnt rubber and um, the fuel that's been spent uh, in comparison to a, a big jump this weekend in sim racing and uh, so what are your thoughts on sim racing is that something that uh, should be covered as well and uh, put together so um, love the folks that have given me feedback so far i know a number of you were excited about me taking um what i'm calling now the not so mobile mobile office out on the roads uh the calendar this morning was saying hey pack up we're going to sebring today was going to be load in day and uh setup day uh so that we could be there for the imsa prototype challenge and then the uh, 12 hours of sebring not happening at this point it will occur on the um, michelin encore weekend uh, later in the season and so depending upon how the whole schedule works out we are hoping that we'll still be able to see at that time but love your feedback at 33 dreams of indy on facebook on twitter on instagram also a facebook group for you to join 33 dreams of indy group love your feedback love your comments uh, and until next time, keep dreaming, dreaming of racing and dreaming of a on-time Indianapolis 500. Take care. Be well. Hope you enjoyed this video from 33 Dreams of Indy. It would mean the world to me if you would click subscribe so that you could be notified of any new videos that come along.